Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another set of tutorials. Today we're going to take a dive into the world of verticality by revisiting tailies, stern stalls and pirouettes. If you're looking for technical templates on those moves, then head back and look at the stern stall and pirouette videos first. This video is going to be more of an exploration and discussion on ways to translate the flat water stern dip onto moving water. The first thing to note is that transitioning this skill onto the white water context does not require a powerful or fast moving current. As in all my examples today, a low flow environment is the perfect place to begin dialing in these skills. That said, there are a few things to look out for. Most importantly, your practice location needs a clearly defined eddy line, i.e. the place where your current and your eddy meet should be distinct. Ideally, the eddy line should have some element of three-dimensionality to it as well. In other words, there should be enough height differential from upstream of the eddy to alongside it to create some downwards pull, a seam as it's called, in the eddy line. Whilst we're on the subject of location, one of the most valuable things you can do to aid your verticality is to observe and mirror the flow. Not all eddy lines are created equal, so neither should your moves look identical in different places either. As in this example, knowing that the flow is not particularly strong or fast, match your rotation and stroke pace to the flow. This will allow you to harness the power of the seam and get more vertical. Conversely, trying to frantically drive the stern down is liable to cause issues. Alongside pace and rhythm, Another make or break element when it comes to stern verticality is edge, particularly the transition from one edge to the other. A common error for tailies or stern stalls is leaning back really hard to try and initiate the stern. Far from aiding you, this actually makes it harder to sink the stern because you have disengaged your core from your knees. A better policy is pulling up through the knees and using those powerful core muscles to rotate while sitting upright. Moreover, the knees are vital in controlling your boat on the stern. Whilst raising a knee drastically to dig your stern edge down into the seam can produce a sudden and very vertical tailie, it's just as often likely to cause either instant rejection or a sharp return to horizontal as you transition from edge to edge. A better policy for maintaining control and sustainability in your vertical pursuits is to practice small but smooth edge transitions, scooping the stern down in time with the flow as discussed. Taking this concept a step further, note how in this example, I try to keep my upstream edge more open than my downstream edge. This keeps the stern driving down and engaging with the seam beneath, rather than rising to the surface, which is what would happen if I fully transitioned from edge to edge. As soon as control is lost and my stern climbs to the surface again, it becomes far harder to drive down once more. Finally, a point about boats. As past Matt noted whilst filming for this video, It doesn't want to go. It doesn't want to go off on the tail, which is amazing when you're running a river because it means that it's really stable. Yeah. Like you come off a drop and it lands, and it'll kick up a little bit, but it'll accelerate. But when you want to get it vertical and staying vertical, you've got to work really hard. This is because the Ripper, like many modern half-slice boats is designed with a lovely wedge of volume directly behind the paddler. Whilst this adds stability, it can also be hard to overcome when seeking to get vertical in the first place. Again, the best solution I have found 
especially in low flow environments, is to follow the flow of the water, not trying to fight against your boat's inbuilt buoyancy, but using the natural rotational speed of the water to overcome it. In the long run, this will get you vertical more often and enable you to have fun too. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial video. I hope you found it enjoyable and informative. If you've been following any of my content and you're enjoying it, please do consider subscribing. It makes a big difference to me and it means that more people get to see and benefit from this content. Likewise, hit that like button, put some comments down below of different tutorials, different videos you want to see. Look out for some more tutorials, some gear reviews, uh, and some other little bits and pieces coming in the near future. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.